Hey everybody, Mr. Judson here. So one, one thing I've noticed, um, and, and I'm sure you guys have too, is I almost look like I'm a silhouette in these videos. Um, it's because of the light background and the television screen, the camera kind of adjusts and thinks it should make everything else darker. So I don't really know how to fix that. I'm not a, a, an audio visual specialist. So, you know, if you wonder why, that's, that's why. So what we want to do is we want to talk about um, functions today. Again, something we did last year in pre-calc and probably in Algebra 3, 4 and, and something fairly simple. And, uh, but we're going to push it a, a little bit farther, just like we did last year. So if they gave us a function like this, um, what they want us to do is they want us to find f of 5. We all know that means you just plug in a 5 and see what you get. So go ahead, take a second, see what you get for that. All right, so if I plug in a 5, I've got 2 times 5 squared, that's 25, minus 5, that'll be 2 times 20, which is 40. There's my answer. So what if they would have asked us to do this? What's f of a minus 3? So now what I'm doing is I'm plugging in an expression wherever I see an x. You guys go ahead and try that. All right, so if I plug in an a minus 3, I've got 2 times. And then in parentheses, I've got a minus 3 squared minus an a minus 3. And I want to simplify that. So first thing I'm going to do is start inside the parentheses and, and do what's there. I'll square this. Remember, that's not a squared plus 9. And it's not a squared minus 9. <laughs> All right? You have to square the first term, multiply the 2 and double it, and then you square the last term. Okay, or you write it out twice and, and go through the FOIL, but you'll get the same thing there. Distribute the negative sign, you get negative a plus 3. And so now what I have is I've got 2 times a squared minus 7a plus 12. And then if I distribute that 2, I get 2a squared minus 14a plus 24. And, and remember, a simplified answer is, is where you do as much adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing as possible. Some people might say, no, no, I think a factored answer is better. And, and I always told you guys last year, I'm not going to go there. If you, if you want to give me a factored answer, that's fine. I'll never mark it wrong. It doesn't really matter to me. So let's try one more. And this time, I want to find f of x plus delta x. Now, when, when you look at that right there, I think we saw some of this last year, but I can't remember. Um, this is one variable. It's not a triangle times x. Delta x is something that we use a lot in calculus that means a very small change in x. All right, so like a very small change means delta x is a number like 0 0.0000001. And some people would go, oh no, that's too big, make it smaller. Okay, fine, add a few more zeros in. But it, it's, delta x always represents a very small change in your x value. So like if x was 5, and I'm going to add 0 0.0000001, then I added a very small amount to my x value. All right? The difference between 5 and 5.0000001 is a very small amount. Okay? That's the way you want to think of it. So let's see if we can figure out what that's equal to. All right, so I want to do the same thing. I want to take this and plug it in where the x was, which was right here. Okay, that's where x was, and I put an a minus 3 in. So I've got 2 times, in parentheses, x plus delta x squared minus x plus delta x. And 
now I just need to simplify that. So I'll do the same thing I did on this one. Uh, first I'll square this. So I've got x squared, multiply the 2 and double it, that would be 2x delta x. It's not 2 triangle x squared because that's not a triangle times x. It just means a small change. So those two variables are not the same. I just got to leave it like that. And then you square the last term. Plus delta x squared. Distribute the negative sign. You got minus x minus delta x. And so I don't see any like terms there. Right? Nothing can be added together. So all I could do is just distribute this 2 and get 2x squared plus 4 x delta x plus 2 delta x squared minus 2x minus 2 delta x. There's my answer. Alright, let's try that one. Alright, so this time I've got f of x equals 3x minus x squared and they want us to find f of x plus delta x minus f of x, and then divide that whole thing by delta x. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks like a good one. What's f of x plus delta x? Well, we just did something like that up here. So, it means I want to plug in an x plus delta x wherever I see an x in that function. Alright? So, this is going to equal 3 times x plus delta x minus x plus delta x squared. What we see inside the parentheses here, that's what we're plugging into the x variable here. And then minus f of x, well f of x is just this function right here, so minus 3x minus x squared, and then divide that whole thing by delta x. So this is going to become real familiar to us. Right now it just looks like a mess and makes no sense at all. Why are we doing this? Um, it'll become pretty familiar. We're going to work with this type of expression quite a bit. We have no idea what it means yet, but it'll be important to us. And, and so this, this is something that I want to make sure I know how to get through. So I'm going to distribute the 3, so I get 3x plus 3 delta x. Here I'm going to square this and then subtract it, so square the first term, you get x squared, then subtract it, multiply the 2 and double it, you get 2x delta x times 2, oh I'm sorry, and then subtract it, and then I square the last term and subtract it. Distribute my negative sign, I get negative 3x plus x squared. And I still have to divide everything by delta x. Alright, so I guess one good thing is some of these things cancel. 3x minus 3x, that's 0. There's a negative x squared plus x squared. That goes away, that adds up to 0. And, and that'll actually be pretty common as as we move forward and, and use this idea, we don't know why yet, but we will, um, things will cancel out. It'll make our, our expression a little bit, uh, a little bit easier to work with. And, and if I look at each term that's left, each of those terms has a delta x in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a delta x out. So here I'm left with 3. Here I'm left with 2x, or minus 2x. And here I'm left with minus delta x. See, if I was to distribute this back, I would get these three terms that are, that are up here. And so now, you know, I just look at this and I'm thinking delta x divided by delta x, those just cancel. It's, it's kind of like if I was doing something like this. 3 times 5 divided by 3. So just like I did here, I can cancel those 3's and 
my answer is going to be 5. So I'm going to cancel these delta x's, and my answer is going to be what's inside parentheses there. So 3 minus 2x minus delta x, there's my answer. And if you think about what I said earlier, delta x is a very small amount. I want to make it so small that really it doesn't have a whole lot of value. And so if, if this doesn't have much value, eventually we're going to see things like this simplify down to just 3 minus 2x. Okay. All right, let's try another one. All right, so in this problem, um, this is a piecewise function. We saw this stuff last year. Um, what it means is this function equals two different pieces, and you can only use one piece at a time. All right? So I'm going to use the square root piece. If the x value I plug in is less than or equal to 5, I'm going to use the um, parabola here if the x value I'm plugging in is greater than 5. just depends on what number we're plugging in. You never plug a number into both. Because no number can be less than or equal to 5 and greater than 5 at the same time. So, I want to find uh, these three. I want to find f of negative 3. I want to find f of 5. And I want f of 10. You guys go ahead and try it. Alright, so a negative 3 is less than 5, so that means I want to plug into the first piece. So this right here is going to equal the square root of a negative 3 plus 4, which is the square root of 1, which is 1. Uh, for this one, okay, 5, you might look at that and go, well that can go to either 1, but no, it can only go to the first one, because this is when my x values are less than or equal to 5. Here you've got to be larger than 5. So I'm still plugging it into the first piece. So this would equal the square root of 5 plus 4, which is the square root of 9, which is 3. And then 10, since 10 is larger than 5, I want to go into the second piece. So this is going to be 10 minus 5 squared. That's 5 squared, which is 25. All right, there's our three answers for that one. All right, so um, I've got two functions here. f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1, and g of x is equal to x squared minus 1. And they want us to find f of g of x. So remember last year we had a notation for this. We would write it this way, f of g of x. Uh, some people call it the fog function. And regardless of which way you write this, you're always taking the second function and plugging it back into the first one. So just like if this said f of 4, I'm going to plug a 4 in here. Well, now I'm saying whatever g of x is equal to, let's plug that into here. So that x squared minus 1 is going to get plugged in here where I see an x. And this means the exact same thing. Okay? You guys see if you can find that answer. All right, so if I'm going to plug g back into the function f, it means this stuff has to go right there. So this is going to equal the square root of x squared minus 1 plus that 1. Okay, this is the stuff right here that just got plugged in. So a negative 1 and a positive 1, that'll add up to 0. So I get the square root of x squared, which will equal x. Okay. Now, technically, a square root has to produce a positive solution. Since x could be a negative number, really the answer to this is the absolute value of x. Okay. But part of the reason why that x is important to us is, you know, we said this last year, if you do a composition, if you plug one function into another and you get x for an answer, what it means is those two functions are inverses of each other. 
or close to an inverse. You know, one of the things we said is that um, this has to pass the horizontal line test. You can only cross the graph one time with a horizontal line. Well, we know a parabola looks like this. That doesn't really pass the horizontal line test. So technically, no, that does not have an inverse unless we control it by limiting the domain. If I say the domain could only be x values greater than 0, well, now I've only got this side of the parabola, not this side. Okay? And so since that would pass the horizontal line test, that would have an inverse, and the inverse would be that function right there. Okay? And if I wanted to double check that, I could say, well, what's, what's g of f of x? Does that also equal x? And if it does, then yes, they are inverses. And it should. If you get x one time, you should get x the other time. If I took this and plugged it into here, the square root of x plus 1 squared, I just put that right in there for x, and then minus 1, while you square root something and then turn right around and, and square it, you come right back to the same thing. So this is x plus 1 minus 1. Those add up to 0, and I got x. So yeah, since I got x on both sides, those, those functions would be inverses of each other. So using those same two functions, what would... What would f of g of 4 be equal to? Same two functions. So, you know, if I looked at this and I just kind of blocked off everything except for the g of 4, you know, what would I do? I'd plug a 4 into this equation. So I'm going to come over here and just say g of 4, that would equal 16 minus 1, that's... 15. So what that means is now I've got f of, what was g of 4 equal to? That was equal to 15. And so now what does that mean? It means I've got to plug 15 back into this function. So that's going to equal the square root of 15 plus 1, which is the square root of 16, which is 4. So what do you get when you plug a 4 into this composition? You get 4. You get the same thing back. All right, that's it. You know, again, not, not too difficult. Um, when you, you know, think about this prerequisite chapter, we're just trying to go back and make sure that some of the, the uh, pre-calculus stuff that we did is, is fresh in our mind, and we're ready to push forward, and I think that's what we got here. So... Here's what I have for an assignment. All right, so we're starting assignment number three now. Uh, assignment number two is due Tuesday. By midnight, 11.59 is what I said on the, uh, the deal. Um, so, so this we will not be turning in tomorrow, okay? Assignment number two is our two previous days of work. So we got page 27 and 28, we'll do 5, 7, 11, uh, 28, 61, and 62. I, I know this looks like I'm being really nice to you guys. I'm only giving you six problems. Um, I'm really not as nice as, as, as it looks because uh, these have like a part A, B, C, maybe a D, I don't know. So there's a few here, but it's not bad. It's not bad. All right, that's it. That's what we have for today. You guys take care. Be safe. We'll see you later.